today, <clears throat> excuse me, today I'm going to talk about how to make a Stamperia stencil using some transparent texture paste and just basic old acrylic paint. Um, I'm using plastic knives as my spatula because I want one for every color. I put a little clump of texture paste and I might add more. Um, it takes me a little bit of time to mix things, so I put a little bit of the texture paste on first. Um, you don't even have to clean this up till you're done. It's water soluble, so I made some earlier and the colors were a little bright, so I added some gray to them. And I might be doing that again. And I think the red is way too bright, so I'll add a little bit. I am using the Savannah paper pack for a couple albums, which I love. But I wanted to do something so special for the covers. And I played with gel press and I played a little bit with the stenciling. I tried this texture paste, but it was really sort of glumpy, so I added some of the transparent paste to it. Um, we'll see if we use that today or not. I might just use the lighter color. So I'm taking a little bit of gray and making my colors just a tad bit duller. Don't want a lot. Sometimes it's hard to get it going. I just want to drop. I tend to put too much dark. <laughs> so I want to be careful. Okay. So I move my paints out of the way. And let's see how we can make these colors match what I was doing before because I sort of like them. That one I turned to brown. You know, when I do things on video, I tend to make mistakes. So we might just not use that orange and try again. Didn't want it too bright, but I also don't want it too brown. So let's try again. I'll have to stick with the brown that's in my orange. So yeah, yeah, that goes well. Good, that's a good orange. Okay, now this is a Stamperia stencil and it goes with the paper of the Savannah. And I'm gonna just turn it upside down and I'm gonna spray it with pixie spray. I'm not sure how this will show. I haven't used this much, but this just helps it stick to your paper a little bit so you don't get bleed on your stencil. Um, my originals, I did not use this, but I saw it in my shelf and I said, oh, this is a good opportunity. Now uh, this paper, <laughs> it's already good. It's just black cardstock and I'm laying my stencil right on it, pressing gently. Okay, and now I start playing. Um, I want some yellow centers. I definitely want some turquoise. It's one of my favorites. In fact, most of my picture will probably be turquoise. And I'm just going to spread it right on the stencil. Add a bit of orange on this one. I'm going to scrape them down with a spatula when I'm done. Right now I'm just spreading it out. And I think that a background could be made by just using a black piece of paper, or it could be cut apart. Um, you can put it right on your book, but for me, I'd rather put another layer of 
cardstock, and that way I won't mess up my matte board. Being fairly random here, um, it's not a science, <laughs> it's just playing. try to do most of this with the amount of paint I have here and we'll see how it comes out. Now what's interesting about adding the paste is you do not get, you get a texture. So not only are you getting, you could dab it with acrylic paint and have a beautiful color set, but if you use a texture paint or the texture paste, when you're done, you're going to have a lot more raised portions. I definitely made less paint than I thought, so we'll just do what we can here. Fill up the stencil. Who knows what it's gonna look like. What's fun about doing it on the paper, you can then cut out your circles, or your medallas, whatever you wanna call them, and add them wherever you want. I'm just gonna make that one all red. We'll see what happens to this. I'm gonna add a little bit more turquoise because I have quite a bit left on that. My knives are getting gooky. I forget to change the knives and they get gooky. We'll add a little bit lighter without adding the gray this time. So I don't really have a rhyme or reason. I'm doing this very eclectically. Um, and I was a little more purposeful my first time around. And maybe because I was nervous because it was my first time around. <laughs> and as I made different samples, I realized it didn't really matter. Okay, now I'm gonna just scrape off the excess And you know when you combine colors, you are going to get brown. <laughs> so you might see a little bit of brown here. But with the savanna, even the brown goes. Okay. Well, let's see. When you're done, this just washes off nicely. You see a little bit of open area there. It just washes off nicely with water. So I'm going to lift my stencil. And we'll see what happens. Here we go. So the trick with the texture paint, now you see I did get over the edge. I didn't bring my stencil to the edge, but I do plan to cut those out. Also, what I'm planning for my cover has um, a border of paper after. So the border will cover it. So I'm just going to turn this around so you can see it well. And then I'm going to show you the ones I worked on before and show you how I plan a cover. So I'm going to just stick this under my desk here so that I don't get paint on the ones that are already dry. And I don't know how long it takes to dry the texture paste. Um, I did it in the evening my first time. And then, let's see, move my glass here. And... I did it in the evening and I just looked at it in the next morning. And you're gonna see why I chose to do texture paste, I mean pixie, pixie spray this time, because I saw bleed through on my stencils and I wanted it to be closer to the thing. These are my extra ones. These are what I played with before I actually put it on one of my covers. Now, I'm not even sure. Let me cover my texture paste so it doesn't dry out. And you know that plastic cling wrap? If you put plastic cling wrap in your bottles of texture paste and such, it'll help them not dry out. Um, it'll make a nice seal so it won't dry out. Okay, so at first, before I did these beautiful stencils, and I am going to use a couple of these in my cover, I'm going to cut them out. 
I tried some gel printing with just a stencil laid in the paint. And I actually completed a cover, it's not adhered from my book, with the circles and then the cutout mandalas, mandalas. And I sort of liked it, but it was still a little bit boring. And that's why I kept going with the color. And this one is not, this cover is not done, but this is painted on and this is painted on with the texture paint. And then I'm thinking of using a couple of the small ones cut out and put them against the area. So I'm going to finish it and see which cover I'll choose. I think a cover is important to your albums. And a lot of people make raised textures and such. In fact, this has this folio. I think it's called Alberta Folio by Claire Chevelle. Um, she used thick chipboard here for her cover and because this flops over to open up and so this goes over your cover this patch but I don't like my albums too thick so that when they're standing on a bookshelf they they stack nicely so I like to make my covers decorative but not too thick so I'll have to decide which cover I'm using the simple ones with circles or the ones with paint but I hope this gives you some inspiration on planning some of your covers and what you can do is just cut out paper and stencils. I know my goal this week was to do um, a few covers and I'll show you the other ones I'm working on next week. Have a great day.